Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome. This is a video where we are in my kitchen. I'm actually making my lunch and I thought I would set up my camera quick, hook up my mic. We'll see how that goes once I move over to the kitchen table, if I don't mess that up. But I wanted to capture this on video. <laughs> this is my very psychic life. Now, I have a session in about oh, an hour and a half or so, so I'm making a healthy lunch right now and I'll walk on the treadmill, do some stretching, um, maybe some light weights, that kind of a thing to just be in a good energy space for my session. But as I am getting ready, I have a bug in my ear. <laughs> Not really a bug, a voice in my head. Oh, that sounds even worse. Um, <laughs> so here's the deal, you guys. I've been doing a lot of connection with Marilyn Monroe lately, like really connecting. And um, I did a meditation a couple of days ago where she came in and um, I was going to visit one of my spirit guides and have kind of a deeper conversation. And I asked to connect with her. I asked for about four days, I think it was, maybe five, because I had been feeling her. I've been really drawn to her. And when I'm recording this video, it's in January, 2019. And I've already recorded a couple of videos and channeling sessions with Marilyn in 2018. So those videos are at Above Life Channel on YouTube and they're on a playlist. But there's something more and I'm just feeling her. I'm just feeling really connected to her. And I think it's for me personally. And so, I don't know, I just have this thing about her all of a sudden. And I'm not sure. I mean, it's not her birthday. It's not, you know, her, her transition day, her death date or anything like that. But there's just something really I'm connected. So I think that in a spirit guide kind of helping helper capacity, either my spirit likes her spirit and wants to chat with her and, and befriend her or the other way around maybe, I'm not sure. I don't usually work that way with spirit. Like they choose me, it's not usually like that. It's like a collaboration and I invite them and somehow, I guess. Well, that's not totally true because sometimes they do just kind of show up. So I guess now that I've been doing a lot of channeling at Above Life Channel, that kind of happens now more than it's ever, it ever happened before, but I'm always that choice. I want everybody to know that so that you don't think you're just gonna randomly have to channel or talk to dead people because that's not, they don't just usually show up. You have to be open and you have to like do this work kind of a thing. You have to have that kind of vibe to allow that. So I'm gonna do, so I had to get this on video. I was going to just do an audio, but I thought, well, I'm doing so many videos, I should just video it. So you're gonna watch me get my food ready here while at the same time, Got to be healthy, you know, having some quinoa and some chicken, chicken breasts and uh, part of a chicken breast, actually. And then I think I'm going to add this really yummy kind of a, well, it's not really teriyaki, but it's a vegetable mix that has like mushrooms and carrots and something you'd put in a stir fry, kind of broccoli and that kind of thing. And so I'm gonna just make something kind of healthy for myself before session, before I exercise before session. And so I'm standing here and I was gonna listen to something kind of positive, you know, maybe a TED talk, maybe some, some motivational entrepreneurial speaker, because I like to do that. I like to listen to some entrepreneurs and give, you know, inspirational, motivational speeches to keep me, keep me up and positive about business and that kind of a thing. So, because this is a business, like this is my job, this is what I do, this is how I make my living now. That was a choice I made in the last several years to do that, that this is my career, so it is. Anyway, um, I wanted to share with you as I'm chatting with Marilyn, so I was chatting with her and I wasn't really chatting with her, I was thinking about her, I was feeling her energy because I have this, my mind is like, asking these questions like, why am I even thinking about Marilyn Monroe? I mean, never really, I mean, I've had some instances in my past, like growing up and when I was young and visiting Hollywood. And I've mentioned before on previous videos that I have relatives out there in Southern California. And so I've been to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I've been in front of the Chinese theater there. I've been, I put my hands and my feet in the, you know, in all of the actors and actresses 
footprints there and all that kind of stuff and handprints. This is neat, right? I have pictures of myself with Marilyn Monroe, the wax, a wax figure um, there. Oh, you're going to hear, you might hear in the background, I should mention. It's kind of a casual vlog style video. My dog's running around. I got some doggies, so you might hear them on the hardwood floors here. But um, anyway, so I, I've been connected to her from that. But here, just a second here. Whoa, hot steam. Ooh, steam. Can you see that? Yeah, probably. Sorry, I got to drain these for a second here. So I've been connected with her in the past like that, but nothing really super serious or anything. I mean, I know what everybody else kind of knows about her and stuff. But, and then from my channel and got to know her a little bit, but now it's like, it's like I really know her. You know, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if I'd say I even really know her because she's a bit of a mystery, but I'm really connected. I think connected to her might be the best way to say it. And my mind at the same time is kind of afraid to be connected to her because, you know, were there, was there mental illness there? Was there... A lot of she's like oh shh, shh. she's like oh psh. she makes these funny noises when you talk to her just you know she makes this silly noise like oh shh. come on kind of a thing you know um i like every isn't everybody a little crazy that's the kind of thing she has and she does talk like this even in the afterlife that's kind of how she sounds which is fine hey sound how you want to sound so if i end up talking like that it's just because i'm reflecting how she sounds to me and we all know that I'm not very good at reflecting how people sound to me. <laughs> I pick on myself a little bit. Oh, I'm going to get a different bowl, actually, because my bowl. That I put all this mix of stuff in. It's like way overflowing. See, it's really, it looks really good, doesn't it? It's healthy, healthy stuff. I'll mix it all together. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Healthy veggies, healthy chicken. All right, so. I was trying to feel her vibe. So I get kind of annoyed when people say that she was murdered, that the Kennedys were involved. And I think it's because she has a problem with that. She does not like that. She does not like that. There's all these like conspiracy theories, which there always are going to be around mysterious deaths. And, and her death was, you know, it was an accident is what she told me. She didn't realize how many pills she had taken until it was too late and she was slipping off kind of a thing into that middle ground, that middle place. Could she have been saved? Yes, if somebody would have showed up sooner, they could have saved her. Um, but we don't want, she doesn't want, I don't want and she doesn't want people to feel guilty about not being there. That's the worst thing. Nobody wants that. Nobody in the afterlife wants that for people in the human life to have to deal with that kind of guilt or pain. That's awful. And she loved the Kennedys. She loved the Kennedy boys. That's how she says. They're not men, they're boys. She loved the Kennedy boys. She really liked Jack, but he was really out of reach. They did have an affair. I could see that. Although she never, um, I don't think she ever publicly shared that, but they definitely did have an affair. But it wasn't that long lived. Um, she and Bobby had more chemistry, I think, than her and Jack did. I think Jack was out of reach for her a little bit. And I think... To be honest, it feels like Bobby actually loved her more, like actually had feeling, real feelings for her and not just um, physical attraction. Because it feels like, I'm going to eat just so you know. It feels like a relationship with Bobby would be more realistic in her view. But let's be honest, Miss Marilyn Monroe, she has high standards and she can do just about anything. She can manifest, make stuff happen. Nothing is really out of reach for her because if she sets her mind to something, she can get it done, you know, get it accomplished. So, I mean, I do really respect that about her. Okay, so I'm going to try to go over, reach over my countertop here. Put my food over here. We're going to go sit at the table. How about that? And we'll chat. So, Marilyn is very friendly. She is very friendly. She's very kind. She's really nice. And she really does not like, not at all, like the stuff about the Kennedys or blaming the Kennedys for her death or anything like that. She's like, that's just silly. That's just silliness. That's just silliness, she says. Okay, so let me grab my food. Go. 
So I'm going to chat with her a little bit about what, so what's this big deal? Like, why am I so connected to you? Like, I don't understand. Like, what's the deal about that? Channeling and eating is probably not the best thing to be doing, but I'm going to, and I'm going to listen, and you guys are going to watch. Or not. You don't have to watch. Turn off the video if you're not interested. Hmm. I like to be playing giver spot. To sit here, let's see. You can, have, you can have a seat, go ahead. She says, oh, this is fun. She says, you eat very healthy, Bridget. Not you, not all the time, you know. Sometimes I like to eat like cookies and stuff. <laughs> she said, oh, I was on a very strict diet. I could hardly ever eat. Really? I was wondering about that. I mean, you had such a beautiful figure and she says, oh, it was a lot of work. Like you, they wouldn't let you eat, you know. You had to keep, you had to keep slim. Hmm. Hmm. Speaking of that, if I can ask, I don't want to be rude, but nowadays people talk about everything. So if you're not comfortable, you can just tell me, but, um, did you have work done? Oh yes. She says, oh yes. All sorts of work done. Like plastic surgery is what I'm referring to. Yes. Yes. Okay. A little nip here, a little tuck there. She's pointing to her chin and something about her cheek or chin. Like her jaw right here, it looks like. And then like almost like a shaving down of the side of her nose somewhere. I don't know. Oh yes. She says it's public. You can look it up. She says you can look it up. It's on public record. I'm like, okay, I don't know any of that stuff because I don't read biographies or autobiographies or tabloids or anything like that. And part of me thinks, maybe I should start doing that because it's just so interesting. Like, I don't know that much about you, Marilyn. I mean, I know what the public knows, but I know that that's only just a tiny sliver of what the reality is. Why are we so connected, you and I, right now? She says, because you're interested in me. She says, oh, oh, Bridget, we have a lot in common. I'm like, oh, not with your public persona. I'm definitely not like this goddess uh, beauty kind of thing. Personality. Oh, but you are. You're so beautiful inside, she said, inside. It's such a shame that people don't recognize that more, even now. She says, even generations beyond, like, she's like showing me her generation and then all these other generations, like referring to mine probably, right? They still don't see that. Such a shame. It's so sad, really. She says, it's so sad. Yeah, I can tell. You're such an empath. That's what we call it now when you're really sensitive. Oh, yes. I was always quite sensitive. But you have to be careful who you show that to. Because some will take advantage of it, she says. Mm -hmm. That's true nowadays, too. So I know you had a lot of moods and emotional challenges and things. Is that part of mental health, would you say? Or is it just stress? Or, I mean, is it hereditary? Like, I know your mother had some challenges, too. She says, oh, you're so polite. She says, you're so nice. She was crazy. <laughs> That's what she says. Oh, she was crazy. But she says, you can't fault people. You can't fault people. They don't know what, you know, how to fix that sort of thing. And no one asks for that kind of a life. So I'm not mad at my mother. I was never mad at my mother, she says. I was never angry at my mother, really. I just simply didn't understand why she didn't want me. Why she always left me. You know, she would come around, but then she would always leave. Hmm. But as a child, as a young child, you know, you never really understand that. Being abandoned and being left, it, it, it seems as though you're just cast aside. You're not wanted. And that creates quite a problem, you know, in your heart. 
I can't even imagine. I mean, you're and and then to become such a well-loved, incredibly talented actress. And she goes, oh, thank you, she says. Who never really felt good enough. I think that's true for many people, don't you think? I mean, Marilyn, don't you agree that maybe no matter how good you are at something, no matter how much recognition you get, no matter how much like in your case, how many people just love and adore you? You still, there's a part of us inside of us that still feels like we want to be better. We want to be more. We want to give more. We want to be a better version of ourselves. But it's not to get more. It's because we don't feel connected to ourselves the way other people see us. So I know there's a lot of people that watch my YouTube channel and they think that you know, I have three, I don't know, a couple thousand subscribers. I don't know how, what it's at now, 3,000 something. or It's not 4,000 yet. I don't think, at the time of this video, I don't think it is. I think there's like, I think it's in the 3,000. But some people will contact me and they feel like I'm like this out of reach person that, um, not a reach person, but someone that you feel like you maybe know me because you watch my videos, but I don't really know you. and. Sometimes um, people, when I connect with them in session, it's so sweet because people are so kind and they're like, oh, I just, I love the channel. I love the work. Thank you so much. And they're really, they really appreciate the work that I do and how I show up. And that is really touching, but it, it really, it, it surprises me over and over and over again. I mean, that's not always the case. I don't always have people that are like, oh, I'm talking to Bridget, you know, but about half the time I do, and I, it's really it's so sweet, and I just I can't I can't even imagine. That's only with like three thousand some people. I can't imagine with like three hundred thousand some people like you stopping traffic in the streets of New York because people are coming to watch you film a movie, you know. She says, she says you never really get used to it. And it's not that, and I'm feeling like she's making me feel like it's not, an, it's not that it's not enough. Like there's a deep appreciation, but there's a feeling of not deserving that. Like I don't need that kind of attention and I don't. But Marilyn, with you though, see that's, there's a, so that's a contrast. That's contradictory a bit because you, from what I've, I've heard about you, you know, in interviews or things like that, because the last like day and a half I've been binging stuff. I usually don't do that. You know, if you're watching this, I don't usually look up stuff on people, but oh my God, I had to figure out in my brain why I'm so connected to Marilyn Monroe. Like what is the common lesson here? Clearly it's not that I'm some sex symbol because there's no, this 40 plus body is not a sex symbol. But, and I have a aversion to the whole fame thing. Like being on YouTube has been a huge thing for me. I'm fine with groups of people in person and stuff, but like doing videos and like having tons of people watch that I don't even know who they are is really a little weird and it was very creepy at first, but this is the best way to reach people and inspire people and share the messages like these cool conversations that I have with people like you. But so I've been watching, I watched a video from like the 90s when it was like your 50th, the an or 50th anniversary of your death. That have been the 90s? Yes. Oh, 30th, I'm sorry. 50th anniversary would have been in the 2000 something, 10s or 2012 or something. But it was like the 30th, it was like 92, I think it was or something. Yeah, 92. And, and I don't remember that because I was like, that was like, I was in college then. I was actually just entering college then. And so I had other stuff on my mind. I wasn't thinking about Marilyn Monroe, you know. I was a far, I'm in Minnesota here. That's like the farthest from California you could possibly be. Temperature, climate, everything. <laughs> it's nothing like LA, nothing like California. I love California, by the way, it's beautiful. Especially San Diego, I love San, she was oh no, Santa Barbara, you need to visit Santa Barbara. Well, I drove through um, Carmel, I think it was. Um, I flew into San Jose one time and I went down to Asilomar to a retreat center in uh, 
that Deepak Chopra, I think, I think it's Deepak Chopra does some of his work there. And I went there for a beautiful retreat and it was awesome. And so I went through, I think it was Oak Grove, but I flew into San Jose and then we drove, drove. I drove in this like bus thingy, not comfortable, but whatever, cheap. That's what I needed, affordable, expensive to go there. And she's saying Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara. I don't remember ever visiting Santa Barbara. She's telling me George, somebody has a house there, George? A J name. Um, not J. G or J. G or J name. Somebody has a house there that she knows or she knew. Okay. So I wanted to find out more, so I watched this interview on Sally Jesse Raphael. Do you guys remember her? She was a talk show host that had like, during the time of Phil Donahue and Oprah and stuff. I don't even know if Oprah was on then. I think she was. Um, she had big red glasses. That's how you knew who she was. And there were a lot of daytime talk shows back then. And so she was interviewing someone, Susan, who, Strasburg. She just said it, thank you, because I was like thinking, I can't, I don't know what the last name is. And then she said Strasburg. Um, Lee Strasburg, if you know anything about Marilyn Monroe. Um, so Susan is her, his daughter. And so Susan knew Marilyn and she wrote a book. And so it came out during, I think the 30 year anniversary of her death. It came out during that time. And so she was being interviewed. Also, um, Jane Russell. Is her name Jane or Joan? Um, I think it's Jane. And then um, she just went and focused on the other man, the other person that was on the panel, which was a man who was your very first husband, Doherty. And so he, Peter, she said, is that his name? Is his name Peter? She's throwing all these names out at me, so I don't know. Oh, there's so many people, there's so many people. Um, and so I watched it and got to know a little bit more about you. And it was interesting to me. And then I wanted to watch again the video of, I think it's called Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I'm not sure of the name, but I know I've been there. In fact, I asked my mom, my mom, who is in California part-time, because she lives out there helping to care for my like 90 plus grandma, her mom. And so she lives out there part of the time to help out. And I asked her, she was here for a birthday party for the kids and uh, she, this was last weekend. And she, I asked her, I said, hey, did we go to this place? And my brother heard me describing it. And he said, I remember that too. And I'm like, oh, my brother was little, like maybe five. And I'm like, I remember, I remember, I know, I remember, you know? And my mom says, oh, I don't know if we ever took you there. I don't know. I'm like, I know, I remember, I remember being there, right there, you know? And so it's kind of fascinating, you know? But, so this Marilyn Monroe thing has been going on for probably a couple of weeks for me, but I've been watching videos for like a day and a half, randomly, like, because you watch one interview, other stuff pops up and I'm like, huh, I gotta be careful not to go down any rabbit holes with that because I don't wanna um, make me as a channel be influenced by things that other people say. And I haven't watched other psychics or other mediums or anything like that. I, I cannot do that because I get a little um, frustrated with that process because I hear things differently or feel sense things differently and we all do. It's just like a hairstylist or a massage therapist. People do things differently, right? They have different ways of doing stuff. You know, it's not wrong. It's just different interpretations. Different writers write different kinds of books, different authors, maybe the same subject, just a little bit different, right? And so I can't do that. I can't do that. Even if they were really good, I don't think I could do it. I'm maybe, but I don't really know any really great psychics that do channeling. My husband has a couple favorites he likes and he'll every once in a while say, oh, so-and-so did this or you should really watch this. And I'm like, I, I can't do it. I just can't. I can't. I just can't do it. It's kind of stressful to do that. I don't want to do that. But I want to know why I'm so connected to you. I mean, I can feel we have something in common and I'm not sure what it is. It's the hair, she said. <laughs> you know. She said, oh, Bridget. She always says this to me. It's so sweet. In the meditation I did the other day to connect with my, one of my spirit guides, and she showed up. Uh, it was Archangel Gabriel, and he brought her in. He said, I have a surprise for you. I have, I have a surprise for you. I'm like, what? 
And he's like, here you go. And it was Marilyn, and she was standing by a buffet table, and she was like putting these little tiny little hors d'oeuvres in her mouth, little appetizers, little tiny, little eating little bits of things. She says, stay away from the shrimp, she says. Do not eat the shrimp. I'm like, okay, like the shellfish, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Do not eat that. I'm like, okay. All right, something about the shrimp. Or the crab meat, maybe it's crab meat. Looks like it's swirled, so I don't know. It might be a little crab cakes or something. Don't eat that. Don't eat that, Bridget. I'm like, okay. And she grabbed my face, and she put my head to her head. I'm like, what is the deal? Why am I so connected to you? And she grabbed my cheekbones. She likes my, for some reason, she likes my cheekbones. I'm like, well, enjoy them now, because the older I get, the more saggy they're going to be. In. <laughs> She's like, oh. She's done that before when I've had session with her. And it's funny because I don't, I don't know if I ever actually said that out loud, but she would be like, she grabbed my cheeks, my cheekbones. Oh, she just likes my cheekbones. She grabbed my face. She's like, you're so beautiful, Bridget. I'm like, oh, she's so sweet. And then she tipped her head like this in toward mine and my forehead. She pushed, kind of pushed mine toward hers and pulled it together. And like she said, we are one of the same, one and the same. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet, you know, because I see her as such a sweet compassionate she's a very sensitive being and the challenge one of the challenges is trying to manage that heart and i feel like although like she had she's talked to me we've she said to me too that our childhoods that were totally different you know like our our lives our human lives are totally different but we are one and the same like we have a there's a, a a bond or something there's some kind of a, a bond isn't the right way to say it but a connection that's deeper that I don't quite know yet I think it's going to be revealed more deeply but it's there's definitely a some kind of a connection my friends and I will try to keep you posted and share this with you as time goes on to see what else comes of it because I know that there's more to be known Besides understanding sensitivity, which is an important thing. And so can I ask you about that, about mental health? We talked a little bit about it, but then we went on. She says, we're all mad. We're all mad. And it's true. I mean, we are kind of all a little crazy. Depends on the perspective of things, right? But right now, mental illness is like a, in the forefront. People talk about it because there's a lot of people dying from addictions and overdoses and and people are self-medicating and there's health insurance issues and there's getting enough people that are counselors and having enough support systems around families, not just the addicted person, but the families because the families get just wrecked inside. People just are not that strong to deal with the kind of abusive energy, not even like from the person that's addicted, but the energy of the cycle of the, the, the addiction is just abusive on the people around you in general. It's just, you can feel the energy. It's just this, uh, uh. nobody wants to be putting the dryer on high for like three hours and boom, 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 uh, uh, I, it's just yucky. That's how it feels to me. It's like spinny, you know? She says, it does feel that way, doesn't it? She said, I think it's very important. Mental health is very important and I think we should take care of our minds. She says, one of the things we can do is begin to not be so mean to each other. If we were just nicer to one another, things would be a lot different, you know? Don't you think? Well, yeah, that's what a lot of people say. That's what a lot of people say. Did you struggle with mental health issues? Oh, yes. In the way that you describe it, yes, yes. But you have to understand that back in those days, there were not, there were not those types of things, you know? Either you were crazy or having a breakdown of sorts or, or not. I did have a breakdown. Actually, I, I believe there is documented two times, twice in my life, but there was more than that. There were very private moments where you simply feel like you can't continue. You can't just continue to, to feel like that. Like you just want it to end, you know? So did you have suicidal thoughts? Would you say that? Well, yes, a few, a few times it, it, like she shows me being brought to the edge and then coming back. And so what changed your mind? Oh, she says, I never really wanted to leave my life. 
I do view life as a gift. I do believe in that. I do believe that God had a plan for me, as he does for you too. As God does for you too. And I didn't want to misuse my body or my, my, you would say, purpose and just leave and throw it away. Like, discard it like an old newspaper. I didn't want to do that, but I just didn't want to be in pain anymore. We used a lot of, I'm asking her in my mind about the medications and the pills. It was, it was normal. She said, we all used pills to help you fall asleep, to help you relax because she needed your beauty rest. If you didn't have your beauty rest, sleep was very important. And if you didn't have that, you could tell, you could see, you could see. And I wasn't very young anymore. Right about the time I would say I was about 31 or 32. That was when I really started to feel more, um, more aware, she says, badly about myself and knowing that my looks would fade and I would have to succumb to the aging. I just, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't bear it, the thought of it, you know. It makes you just crazy. But what she's showing me or what I'm feeling from her is stress. It feels like stress, like incredible amounts of pressure and pressure from within yourself, not just externally. Oh no, there was both. There was a lot, you know, the studio men were very um, sort of um, churning things out. And if you didn't make the cut, you didn't make the cut. And I had those experiences early on as well when I was young and just beautiful and just full of life. And everything was simpler then, you know, because you didn't have anything. So whatever you had was so great. It was just so fantastic to have something. And as time goes on, it's, you're more, you become more and more afraid, you know, paranoid really about losing what you don't even think you have in the first place or don't deserve to have really. And so I gave most of my things away if I could. People would say I was very generous, but I, I don't, it wasn't necessarily because I felt that I should help people. It was because more that I, I wanted to share, you know, I wanted to see people happy and, and sometimes those things would help people feel more happy, you know, and if I could do that for someone, then that made me feel happy and just for a moment though, you know, it didn't last very long. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're about done here. I think this this video is pretty long. I need a new refill on my tea. So I feel like part of the lesson that you're here to teach me about is about understanding our inner feelings about our own value and not because other people don't value us but the way that we feel about ourselves is so important to how and directly related to how happy we are and connected to you know that purpose within us and wanting to be better I think is a natural thing and to do you know um, for me it's like transformative channeling the more I transformative channel the better I get in comfort level in the transitioning states and the more I'm willing to share on video those things and recognizing that it's a process you know and I do feel like it's related to enough, doing enough. How much have I done? Because I think about that with my work. Every day I think, oh, what else can I get in? I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. You know, there's all sorts of things I got to do. And I don't have, you know, assistance that can help me at this point. I have, I have somebody that helps me um, from time to time with things, but not, I need more support for sure. And... I feel that in part that's what you are kind of leaning in to teach me a little bit about how to not be happy with the process or the growing process, I don't know, growing of my business. Not necessarily my, I don't want to say my psychic skills because I think you can always be better at what you do and I like to learn and grow. But I've been, 
I'm very confident in my gifts and my skills. I'm not, I don't need to like show people how great I can be as a medium or a psychic or a clear or a healer, which I do all of those things. But it's more about as a whole person, you know, the business side of things, learning more about that and getting smarter and more savvy about the business side of things so I can make a living at this long term, not just fly by night because it's not, this is not a hobby business. This is my work and my life's work and, and it needs to be successful. And in order to be successful, there's a lot of ingredients, a lot of components. And luckily for me, I get to show up and do the work I love and channel and share. And I think that that's inspiring to others to see that you can do that and you should be doing that. And for me, it's a message in that all of this is about balance. You know, it doesn't matter how many people love you, it's do you love yourself? You know, enough to not care if people don't. <laughs> love the ones who love you, ignore the rest. That's what Prince told me once in a channeling. He's like, love the ones who love you. He's like, there's plenty of people that aren't gonna like you or that are just gonna kinda like you but love the ones who love you. That's what you make the videos for. That's what you make the music for, in his case. That's what you make the movies for. You know, for ourselves, right? For each one of us. Knowing that there is this group that will totally get it, you know? Get it. So, it's worth it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Can you come over here really close? Can you come over really, really close so that we can do a little thing here. Can you come right, right here really close? Let's take a picture of us together. Oh no, don't put your lipstick by me though because <laughs> you always have such beautiful red lips. She's, oh, and she smells good. You smell good. She says, oh, you like it? It's Chanel. Like, I know, it's beautiful. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'm not sure where I'll share this video. I might share it in a small group. I might share it at Above Life Channel. I might share it on Facebook. I'm not sure. Wherever I share it, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope your spirit feels inspired today. I hope that you feel filled up with hope. And my advice to you is that this is your life. Whatever this is that you're living, this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>